what's up guys how we doing so I'm always getting questions all the time from people online asking me to talk about Omar Vizquel's failing mechanics I get them probably at least a couple a week and Omar Vizquel without a doubt is one of the greatest infielders to ever play the game and I thought we could look at a couple of things since I get asked so much uh, just a couple of things that I notice when I watch him when I watch him play what he does really really well which is basically everything but we'll hit on a couple of a key things a couple of things that I see when I look at his uh, his videos so first video we'll look at is um, I found this online he's doing a, a little demonstration of the fungo man it's uh, just a machine that shoots ground balls at you fly balls it's actually an awesome machine we had it when we when I played with the Padres um, it's just it's expensive so it's tough to buy for you know your use at your house or something but it's great for for teams professional teams and college teams anyway so he's doing a little demonstration and although he's going only at half speed there's a couple of things that I really notice uh, when watching him so I'll just play the video and just kind of talk over it as it goes um, so he's just working on backhands and, and then he does a couple of forehand plays Everyone always talks about how great his glove is, and he does have some of the best hands in the world. And one of the things you can tell that he's talking about in here is how soft his hands are and to keep his, his hands loose. And that's one thing, especially on backhand balls with younger kids, is a backhand ball for most guys is, is a tougher play just because they don't practice it as much. And so they get stiff. And you can see with his hands how nice and loose and fluid they are. He never panics, even when he gets an in-between hop. He doesn't get tight with his glove, and that's something I see a lot of young kids do, and that's something that I do sometimes also. If you get a tough backhand ball or a hard hit ball, you tense up, and then you don't have the ability. There, there right there is where he was talking about uh, keeping his glove loose. Kids tighten up, they tense up, and then you have no ability to move. The tighter you get, the stiffer you get, the harder it is to move or make an adjustment on a bad hop. He's so loose that he's able to move his glove nice and easy and freely. Another thing he does really well on his backhands is, is he stays he stays low. We'll go back real quick and check out a couple more. He works from the ground up. So he gets his glove down and he works up every single time. He gets the glove open in a good position, gets low, works from the ground up, not from up to down. That's another thing a lot of young kids do is they get up high, then they stab at it or a jab at it. You can see how soft he's getting down and then working up. The biggest thing I see with him, and this is a thing a lot of people don't really focus on, he does have great hands, but his feet are what put him in position every single time to get his glove in a good position and then to make a good throw. You rarely ever see him make a bad throw because he's always in such a good position. He's kind of talking about it right here, get into that good, strong throwing position. But it's your feet that put you in that position. If you don't use your feet the right way, You'll never get your body or your arm in the right spot. And I've been working with a lot of young kids over the last few weeks at practice. And one thing I notice is there's a lot of wild throws from young kids, which is understandable. They're young and they're still learning the play. But the biggest thing is they don't use their feet. They worry all about their arm and balls are going all over the place and they're not using their feet. Every single time you see Omar field a ball, no matter what he does, he always gets it so that his feet are in perfect position to throw to first base. He gets his front foot on line, he gets his feet underneath him, he gets his front shoulder on the target, and he consistently does that every single time. So let's go back and let's just slow down a couple of these. So he uses his feet on the backhand balls especially. He's always getting around the ball and getting his feet and his momentum working back towards first base. So you can see how he gets low, he uses his feet, get his body lined up so that when he lands right there this is the position he's in no matter what ball he fields so he has his feet perfectly underneath him they're square they're lined up to the target his shoulders on the target he takes the ball out thumbs down and he's in a perfect position you would think he was just standing there to play catch but he actually got around the ball fielded a tough backhand ball and now makes a good strong throw we'll go up to the next one And right there he was talking about it, getting around the ball and getting into that strong position where everything is lined up perfectly right there. Move ahead a little bit. Here comes another ball. Again, 
is going to work. It's going to work from the ground up. It's going to replace his feet right to left. Left to his target. And here he takes a couple of shuffle steps, nice and easy. But again, he's lined up perfectly. So that's more of a routine ground ball backhand that he gets around the ball. For him, a backhand ball is a routine play. For a lot of younger kids, it's obviously not. But for one of the best fielders in the world, it is. Again, same thing. Works from the ground up. He's going to use his feet right to left. Right there, right to left. Left to his target. And again, in a perfect position to make a throw. So those are the things I really see with him is how he uses his feet to get his glove and his body in a good position, not only field it, but to throw it, but also how loose he keeps his glove and he never tenses. And, and that comes from experience and from repetition and from confidence of feeling that you can make every single play. But he never looks worried or hurried. He's always loose and he's always under control of himself. And one thing uh, in this video, a lot of people will watch it and say, well, he's only going half speed, you know. One of the biggest things, and one thing you'll notice if you go to major league games before the game or if you go to spring training, guys take ground balls at this pace right here. If you went to watch him before a game, this is how he's going to take most of his balls. One of the biggest things that those guys do is they try to slow the game down. By doing that, they, they move slower. They don't, they don't, don't want to be in a hurry. So they're controlled in everything they do making sure that their feet are right, that their hands are right. And by slowing the game down this way, when, it, you, when you get into a game, you're not going to panic or rush. You're only going to move as fast as you need to move. And that's one of the big things. Young kids move 100% all the time, and they get under control. Older, experienced major league guys only move as, ha as fast as they have to move, and they're always in control of themselves. And obviously, on a real tough play, they're going to move faster, but they still do it in a way where they're under control, and they're not just flailing things all over the place, but they move in control with good feet, put themselves in a good position to field it and throw it. So those are a few things I see with Omar. Hopefully it helps out a little bit. Let me know what you think, and uh, we'll talk to you later.